Health and safety is really important. <laughs> submit a 2,000 word essay, there's 100 of you, that's 200,000 words I've got to read. <laughs> I'm just not doing it. <laughs> so what I might do, keep this in mind, those who present their work in a nice font, you know, 12 point, Calibri, whatever, double spaced, I'll probably just give you a 2 1 or a first, the rest of you have to fuck off. Because it's just too much, right? I'm only one man. I can't do everything. Now, hopefully, you're all in the right place. NS100, Introduction to Media Communication. Is that the case? Some yeah. is your media students. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a really positive response from the front here, yeah? Well, the rest of you excited. You've chosen to do this for the next three years. You've committed yourself to thousands upon thousands of pounds of debt that is going to hang around your neck like a lead weight for the rest of your lives. Are you excited? Yes. There you go. This is what I like to hear. It's only just £27,000 of the tuition fees. And then there's the living allowances on top. What are we talking? 47, 48 grand minimum? Oh yeah. That's alright. I would have taken the call. <laughs> My dad's run me in that case before and I make a business of it, of not just taking the call, but also putting it on speaker. Because it illustrates that you can go far in life even though your parents are massive tarts. Because it's nearly always, uh, uh, uh. I can't get Excel to do this. And it's like add two cells together because it's like thick as shit. So, introduction to media and communication. This is me. I am Dr. Lathan Evans. Please, um, but already this week, people have been emailing me saying, Dear Dr. Evans. And it's like, who are you talking about? Somebody says Dr. Evans. I would like, like look around. And, Holy <laughs> Please call me Lathan, all right? But don't send. Those people sent me emails this week because there's a thing that everyone was supposed to do, which only about 20 people have done. But there was a thing, and people have sent like you know things, and there's been no like anything. It's just been a thing. It's like I haven't got a name. I do have a name. My mother gave me a name. I'm not keen on it, but. It is what I've got, I have to work with it, right? Now, my areas of interest, virtual reality, augmented reality, gaming, social media. That's what I've published on over the years, that's what I do. Um, my latest paper comes out this month, where I talk about VR pornography and using dildos in virtual reality. It's a page turner, people, and I'm going to distribute it to you all. This is the future. Now. Um, I have another book coming out like next week, which isn't about that, but <laughs> I think that's the, the, the easy topic to talk about. Um, in the second year, I teach social media cultures, and in the third year, I teach gaming, so those are my primary mode of teaching. And because I've been doing this for about a billion years now, um, 
I teach this introductory module to media and communication at the university. So, even though I've been doing this for about a billion years, let me plaster on a fake smile and plow through this shit one more time. Um, my office hours, very important, very important to know when to get me. Monday 1 till 2, Thursday 11 till 12. I am in room 121 of the Digital Technium building. The, we have a map on the first floor and there's a picture of me and it actually looks like me, which is kind of weird if you look for me on the internet. None of the pictures look like me anymore. I've got one of those faces that changes over time. On Thursdays, I'm in from 9 and anyone is welcome to come in. The door is open. So really it's 9 till 12 on a Thursday. And you're more than welcome if you've got any questions about this module, if you've got any questions about your course, if you've got any questions about life, I'm here to help. I can't give you good advice, but I could probably fuck it up for you in a big way if you really want to go. If you want to push it, okay? I'm your man to really, really. I mean, look at my life. Look what I'm doing. By the time I'm this sit, I'm 42. I wanted to be driving around in a van with a Great Dane solving ghost mysteries at amusement parks. That one, oh, that's what I wanted my life to be. Look at me. I'm a complete failure. If you swipe in after 15 minutes, you're recorded as absent. I don't know if anyone told you that. Ah, I see. That. If you're recorded absent four weeks in a row, there's some kind of escalation process where somebody will get in touch with you. That's why there's a delete button on your emails. Now then, teaching on MS100 is by a team of specialists. There's me, there's Chris. Uh, Chris is your programme director for undergraduate studies. Uh, there's Evelyn, who's my PhD student in her final year, and she's been doing this for three years now, so she's pretty much an expert as well. And then there's Sean, who will be coming to see you guys in his seminars in week three, <coughs> where she'll do a library induction specifically for media students. So the seminars, when they come around in week three, Sean will be taking them. I'll be there, um, if only because. I, I could do with the help, to be honest. I went in the library before. I went, I went in the library in the summer, thinking like induction was coming up. I could get people to do something library related. I, I haven't been in the library for years. Um, I, was, I couldn't even find my own books in there. I couldn't search properly. So Sean can help with all that sort of stuff. And Sean, who's a subject librarian, but you probably don't need to know who Sean is. This lecture is a welcome. I will go through the module in depth, I will go through what assignments you will be doing, and I will go through what media studies is. What you've got to do when people come in late, it's very important that you make them feel incredibly self-conscious. <laughs> Then you encourage them. Right, so first up, I want to talk about this the MS100 Canvas site. So, where am I going to go for this? So, we could start, right? No, 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 that's not right. Why is it not showing up? Oh, I hate this university so much. I hate working here. I just. Makes me feel sick. Yes. So this is, I guess, where all the magic happens, right? Now, I did ask everyone to access this site this week and to download the module handbook and to complete the task in the module handbook. Some of you have done that. 80% of you have not done that. I know this because it tells me. 
there is a statistical tracker built into every function of this site. Therefore, I know already that most of you have not done it. So your first task for this week is, don't piss me off. Do what I asked you to do and do it today. Because if you don't, you are behind. There are four assignments on this module. There is no time to be behind. It doesn't exist. This module is hectic. You are already from today preparing for your first assessment, which has been two weeks. Actually, less than that, 13 days. So after today, you are on it. You are already 80% of you behind. Don't be behind. It's not a comfortable place to be. What was the task I asked you to do? No, that wasn't the task. That was what you did if you did the task. But thanks for giving a spoiler to everyone in the room. <laughs> what was the task? Read the module handbook. Module handbook is a 10,000 word document took me hours to do. Oh, Read the module handbook. Now, everything that you need for any module you are doing is on this site. In theory, some people do not populate Canvas with things which are particularly useful. However, I do. Everything you will need to pass this module is here. In theory, you could just use this. You wouldn't get a very good mark though, because you need to come and get the context of what everything is in these lectures and in the seminars. Seminars and lectures make sure you don't just pass, you go <coughs> and get the good grades. But in theory, everything is here for you to do everything. In this site, the most important tab is this one, the modules tab. I'm sure people have been through this already. However, you can't access any part of my course until you've done what I asked you to do last week. The whole thing is locked. Okay? Fair? Also, because I'm a complete an utter bastard of the highest order. You can't progress through this course until you do everything every week. This, my friends, is the only core module on your degree. What that means is that the medium communications degrees, no matter which one you're on, have listed this module as having essential content. For any degree you are doing, you don't just need to pass this module, you need to have done all the content in the module as well. That's not a particularly easy thing to set up, because a lot of this will be, you've just done some reading, you've looked at some slides, but we have to quantify that you have done that in some way. <coughs> so, the entire course is also locked you have to go sequentially, week by week, through this course. So, once you've unlocked the course by reading the handbook, then you have to go through week one, where you have to read the overview, look at the slides, and do the reading. And you have to do that week on week. Those three tasks never change. Look at the overview, review the slides, do the weekly reading. Every week the same. That will unlock the next week and the next week, and the next week, until we get to week 11, and there is nothing left to be unlocked. So much fun. In here, which are also important things that I need to point out, I'm actually going to switch to student view, because this will make it slightly easier to view. Um, this here, assignment 2 reading, you will need to start pretty soon. Probably not this week. You can probably leave it next week, but the week after you will need to read this. And don't worry about time for assignment three just yet, but I've put up a free book for you. The other key thing that I want you to see is this. There is a recommended text for this module, Media, Culture and Society by Paul Boxkinson. The book is about 25 quid on Amazon. 
have it for free. If you just hit that link, it will appear magically ahead of you. If you don't ask where I got it from, I won't lie to you about where I got it from. And this goes for you people too. If you don't tell people where you got this from, nobody will take it away from you. But if somebody says, especially when Sean comes in on week three because she works in the library, where did that book come from? I don't know, what book? I don't know anything you're talking about. Copyright fraud. We don't know anything about that. We haven't done that yet. That's a topic for year two in media law. We don't know anything about copyright fraud. Have we got a deal? Excellent. I've just saved you 25 quid. I expect coffee. Good. So, the assignments and that will make more sense as we go through this session. Do we have any questions about Canvas? Has everyone been through their Canvas sites with you? Yeah? How does it know that you wrote the Canvas? Well, there's two ways. One, I can check you to see if you've unlocked the course. And two, if I go into people, and it takes a while, because let's be fair, the university's pretty slow. I can generate a report off every one of you to see where you are on the course. And I do this every two weeks. If anyone is more than three weeks behind, I send them a really, really aggressive email. Because not only do I know you're behind in the course, but of course, I also know where you live, because it's on the system. And then, you know, if it goes to four weeks, <coughs> then you get the head of a dead animal being sent to your house. Okay? And it depends how much I like you or dislike you, what kind of animal that is. If I like you, it might be a rabbit. If it's not, it might be like, I don't know, a tangy or something, you know. It be any one, really. Does that answer your question? <laughs> I don't want you all to be that scared, but be scared. Um, so, yeah, everything is laid out for you. Now, in each week as well, I add materials. So usually there's a whole bunch of video material uh, linking to YouTube sites which will help you with understanding. This is the first assignment we've got coming up, so it's a link on the canvas to referencing an exam. That is, I'll come to it in a second, I won't jump ahead of that. Um, and there's just, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff to help you through courses all the way through. So, everything you need is here. Any questions? No? Let me just give my opinion of this, sorry. Canvas is not good. It's a really, really bad system. <laughs> it's not easy to use. It's not easy to use for me. Now, did anyone ever use something called Moodle when they were in school or college? Yeah, you've heard some of you? Back in like 2003, I used to be a school teacher and Moodle was released and I became one of the first programmers ever for it. I learned how to program PHP. So I wanted to do this for my classes. And so I've got a lot of experience of using this kind of software, and this is tremendously bad. This is just about the worst virtual learning environment there is. It's really hard to navigate. It's really unintuitive. One of the things I talk about in year three in gaming is something called UX, user experience. One of the most important things with video games and how you get people immersed in video games is you have really good UX. People feel, as soon as they start the game, oh yeah, this is easy. You know, I'm in it. I'm, I'm there. I'm, it's good. I'm, I'm there. This is the worst. This sucks more. This defies physics by sucking and blowing at the same time. Right? But it is what we have. And we have to work with it. Okay? Now, I go over the top. I literally dump just about everything I think you could need onto Canvas, because I don't think it integrates well with other things, so you might as well have everything there. If you have any questions about the content of things on Canvas, please ask. If there's anything that doesn't work for you, please ask. <coughs> if there's anything at all that you want added, that you think, could you provide something on this, please ask. I will find it and I will put it on. Okay. So, it is not just for me to push to you either. Pull it back as well. If you think things can be changed, if you think things can be improved, don't ask me to take the locks off. That's not going to happen, alright? 
But if you want me to change things, I'm happy to have that conversation. Okay? It is a collaboration at the end of the day, everything that we do together. Okay. So, back. Love it. MS100. Okay. As this is a cool module, these are the things that you have to apparently achieve in order to pass this core module. So, has anyone been through passing and failing stuff yet in the first year? I know Richard probably talked about this in induction. A lot of you probably weren't listening. I certainly wasn't. So, does anyone want to refresh a course on this? No? What are you going to have one anyway? So, passing a core module means you've got to pass. MS100, you have to pass. There's other modules in the first year you can, in theory, not pass. You can have what's called a tolerated fail. If you fall between 30 and 40%, which isn't a pass, we're going to let you go forward to the second year anyway, because you can have two modules which sit in that band and they're okay. You will go forward. It's not a good idea. Okay, let me just say that. No, it's not a good idea. And a lot of people say, first year doesn't count. No, it's not part of your degree. It doesn't count. Nobody's going to care. Wrong. When employers or other institutions ask us for information on your degree, everything goes. So, if you've been offered a job and they come to us and say, like, can we have a transcript of this student? It shows, like, they failed the first year module. I'm the person in HR in that department. <gasps> they failed film studies? Oh, my God. This person can't be trusted to, you know, I don't know, stock shelves in Tesco. How they don't know anything about film studies? This is, a, this is an egregious situation. It is time to let this person go. <coughs> it's a bit hyperbolic, but... It has been known, especially when people going on to master's courses, that failed modules do get picked up. And we have to like, explain what the system is at Swansea and how that person compensated for what they failed, and so on. It has happened to be fair once with somebody I've been doing references for. I've had to actually go back to the new university and say, yeah, this person did fail this module, but as you can see, blah, blah, blah. And I have to get into a whole thing about it. That's in my summer. I don't want to get into a whole thing in the summer. I want to be sitting in my underwear every day playing video games in the summer. That's my thing. I don't want to be writing stuff for the audience. <coughs> so, it's not quite true to say first year doesn't count. Because in this day and age, everything you do counts. Everything is quantified. Everything is measured. Okay? This module in particular counts because if you don't pass MS100, you cannot progress. Even if you passed all the other modules, you can't progress onwards without this one. So bear that in mind. The fortunate thing is, this module is difficult. I, I'm not making that up. This is not a difficult module. Three of the assessments are skill-based, and therefore, they should already be well within your capabilities. You will get lots of assistance. It is not hard, I promise. But these are the things you actually have to demonstrate achievement in, in order to pass this module. Introductory understanding of key terms. That is assessed to assignments 2, 3, and 4. Awareness and knowledge of particular authors. That's mostly assignment 4, the essay. Some aspects of change in the media. Again, that is mostly in assignment 4, but also in assignment 2. Successfully complete a set essay. Is assignment four and demonstrate a range of relevant study skills, including taking concise and relevant notes on reading, assignment two, writing an essay plan, assignment four, and researching a bibliography on a set topic, two, three, and four. And indeed, assignment one, which will be the first one you do. So, all of the assignments are mapped on to these learning outcomes. Do the assignments, you achieve all those, you forget this ever happened, and you move on with your lives. Deal? And I forget this, uh, this unpleasantness ever came between us as people, and we can move on and have a beautiful friendship. But for now, I'll do this first. 
you know the module topics. If you've read the module handbook, you will be familiar with these module topics. Today, introduction to media and why should we study media. There is no seminar tomorrow, so don't worry too much about that, but you do have to do the reading on Canvas in order to kick open week two. Next week, academic practice for media students. <laughs> <laughs> and week three, how to get first class degree in media studies. Okay. Right, I've got to deal with this, right? So, I don't know why I'm the one who has to do this. I guess there's reasons, right? Elena wants to be your friend. Okay, and I get that. And Joanna, this is being recorded, so let me be really careful. Joanna can be quite scary. Okay? If Joanna knocks on my office door, I go and hide in the back of the office. I really like Joanna, but she's fucking scares the shit. <laughs> so she's lovely. Alright, she's lovely. Okay. So they asked me to do all this shit instead. And what all this shit is, is over the past few years, and in particular last year, the department has identified that there is a need for a general introduction, not just into like, this module or the first year course, but the entirety of the courses we run. There wasn't space given to introducing what you have to do over the next three years. The net result of that, as people saw it last year, was that students progressed at different rates. And there were a lot of people who were running to catch up right at the end of the year. Whereas if we took a view at the beginning of the year, these are the things you will need to do. These are the things you need to concentrate on. This is exactly what you do, and that will be helpful. I kind of put my hand up to do this a little bit because it beats teaching. You know, so it beats me having to do any thinking and stuff. So the first three weeks are really overview of everything that we will be doing in the next three years. I think that's a fair way of setting it up. In particular, next week and the following week. The week three one, I'm not kidding. If you do what I tell you to do in week three, you can't not get a first class degree in media studies. You will be fine. Okay? So week three is big. Um, after that, there are one, two, three, four, seven weeks of specifically chosen topics, specifically chosen because these cut across all the other modules you will do in the next three years. So while this kind of takes the format of a general introductory module in media, and those of you who have studied media in the past, be it A-level, GCSE, BTEC, or their equivalents, you will be familiar with these topics, but this is a step up from that level of study as well, and you will be expected to do more. But you may well be very familiar with some of the topic areas. Some you might well be less familiar with. For example, in week seven, the Frankfurt School and Cultural Studies, that doesn't really appear on many syllabuses beneath the degree level. But and indeed media discourse and power isn't probably a new topic as well, albeit you might well be familiar with some of the people and names that are used in it. There is nothing here that you can't handle. That much I can tell you. The essay, Simon 4, will be based on one of these weeks. You choose which week to focus upon. Okay? So there are a number of set essays they are already available to you. If you've unlocked the handbook, they're in the handbook right at the end. <coughs> Go and have a look today. Do it for next week. Knock yourself out. No? Make my life easier. I don't have to teach the topic. Eh? In fact, if everyone does all the assignments this week, we can go home. We can have the day off. Thursdays can be... It's not that hard. Please, do the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I designed the module like this is because all of these topics occur across all the modules that you will be doing over the next three years. So I've picked topics which I know you will have to know in order to be up to speed for those other things that you are doing. And that even goes for this semester. If you look at film studies, for example, 
9 and 10 will help you when it comes to doing your second assignment for film studies. If you look at um, Elena's module, 4, 5, and I'd argue 7, and probably 11, are all relevant to your assignments in MS104. If you look next semester, if you're doing media history, certainly uh, 7 and 8 will basically be regurgitated ad infinitum in media history. Um, if you and indeed 4 and 5, kind of as well, 4, definitely. Um, if you're doing Ewan's PR module, four, five, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, and weirdly eleven, all of those will contribute towards your assessments for that module. So these individual week by week topics are here for you, not just to do now, but in order to take forward into all your other modules, which is why this is core and it is why you have to cover them now. This is why that decision has been made, say, right, in MS100 students have to engage with this material because when you're doing MSP100R, they will need to know all these things. And anyone will expect you to know those things when you do that module, hence you have to do them now. Okay. Let's go on to the assignments then. First assignment. 19th of the 10th, 2022. Not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. When? Well, very good. Snap. That's what I like. Snap, snap, snap. Are you all taking the note? 19th of October, 2022. Those of you asleep, somebody take a pen, <coughs> write it on their face. Backwards, so when they look in the mirror afterwards, it's forward. Look. Not like an ambulance. I was thinking this year that if, like, I mean, we are only half an hour in. If somebody was thinking, I was going to get one of those tattoo guns off Amazon and see if I could do a homemade tattoo with it on someone's face. But I thought, it's a lot of money. I could just, like, get a knife or something. and some ink. <coughs> it does the same job, right? And if we can pretend like that we're in prison. And that will foster a sense of community spirit. Right? <laughs> then I run that past Richard Thomas, he wasn't keen. So, my friends, your first formal assignment in your university lives belongs to me. But I'm not marking it because it's a multiple choice examination. Our favourite kind of examination is multiple choice. Do you know why? Always pick C. True story, I was one of the first people in the UK ever to do the drive-in theory test. 1996, January 1996, I'd already passed my driving test, but I had to do the theory test. I missed the cut-off date <coughs> one day passing my driving test. So I went into this room in Swansea, the building's still there, and um, they gave me this paper and a pencil and said, you have 30 minutes to complete this test. Now, I hadn't read the highway code or anything ridiculous like that, right? I was too busy. I was 17 years old. I was too busy with cigarettes and books and, yeah. So, I go in. I don't know what I'm doing. But the pass mark was only 17 out of 35 at the time. So I just picked C. I passed. Oh, yeah. I passed that bad boy by just picking C. If you get stuck, pick C. It worked for me nearly 30 years ago. It's bound to work again, right? So, you have a multiple choice examination on referencing. Next week, I will go through referencing in the lecture. On Friday next week in your first seminars, we will go through referencing again. Then you will do the examination the Wednesday afterwards. Do not worry, there is a referencing guide on Canvas for you to use. And this is the kicker with it. You can have the referencing guide open as you do the test. In fact, I want you to have the referencing guide open when you do the test. The whole point of this test is to get you used to using that document. I, don't, I, don't, I want you to have it open all the time. If you're doing um, an essay, I want you to use it. It's not like something you have to learn off my heart right now. 
I want you just to get used to, oh, I've got this like, YouTube video, how do I reference it? Oh, I know. I'll open that. And, hey, what do you know? It says right there how to do it. You know? So I want you to get used to accessing and using that document. This test is designed to help you get used to using that document. And that is it. There is virtually no chance of you failing this test. Unless, <laughs> only two people have ever failed this test. The combined IQ of those two people is probably less than that of a medium-sized banana. They are both third-year students now, and to be honest with you, how they've got that far, I'm not quite sure. Right? One is basically a jelly in person. It is, is spectacular how bad these two people are. But in the same year as one another, they've both failed it. Interestingly enough, they both failed it for the same reason. They were foundation year students at Swansea who believed they'd done all this before, did it as quickly as possible, and both got like 30%, which is pretty much impossible. The questions aren't even that hard. I mean, so they only got like six out of 20 right. There's like at least 10 of the questions are absolutely obvious. You know, a blind person would get like 12. So these two only got six. Um, there is no retaking this, okay, because it's only 10% of the module final grade, so it's too small to actually have a kick in a retake. The average mark for this assignment is just short of 80%. So, you have an opportunity here for your first ever assignment at the university to get a first class grade. Right? Average mark is well over a first class grade. Take your time with it. Use the referencing guide. Have it open. Literally, look at the answers. It is not hard. And you will get a nice first class grade for your first assignment and everyone will be happy. Not least me. Because the more people who get first, the better it looks <coughs> on my KPIs. And I'm trying to go for professorship. So please, get first, you fucks. Alright? That helps me. Now, as I said, you can have the guide open. You can do this together, as far as I'm you, so you, you want to do it as a group, all of a laptop open and do it at the same time and discuss it. Fine. I, I do not care how you do this, but just do it. You have between midnight and one minute to midnight on the 19th. You can do it at any time. You need to set aside, I'd say, about 25 minutes. You can't jump out to the test when it starts. So you need to set around 25 minutes to half an hour to do it. If you jump out, press back, go anything like that in your browser, it will submit. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> right. If that happens and you've done it by mistake, you have to email me and I will reset it for you. And I can do that at any time on that day. Okay, so it's not a big deal. If there is anyone in this room who cannot for any reason do it on the 19th, I can set it up so you can do it at a different time, but you need to tell me. That's all. I'm happy to do that, and I've done it in the past for people. When I've set it a day early or a day later because the hospital appointment or whatever it was, you know, and it was, it was a whole thing. I can do that. If you cannot complete, yeah, please just let me know. But this is a given. It's easy. It's super easy. And you'll be able to go to your friends and loved ones and say, look at the, I've only been in this course for two and a half weeks and already I'm pulling like 90, 100 percent. I'm the greatest. Give me money, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this is perhaps an insight into what I'd be doing if I was taking this test. Simon 2. Due date, 3rd of the 11th, 2022. 28 days away. Hence me saying, you need to get on that shit. <laughs> Assignment 2 is a summary exercise. Now, I make no apologies for what I'm going to ask you to do here, but it's a lot. Assignment 2, you're going to be asked to summarise a chapter from a book. The book is Media Studies 2.0 by my very good friend and colleague, William Merrick. And you're going to be asked to summarise chapter 6. 
I have done a video on this. It is up on Canvas. In the video, I even tell you how to do it. But you will need to read it. This is the kicker. <laughs> Chapter's 34 pages long. 8,000 odd words. Hence me saying earlier, you want to get on this pretty soon because it's a long chapter. There's a reason why I make you read something so long, and it is this. This chapter is about the history of media studies as a subject. You read this chapter, you will know the history of the subject that you're doing for your degree. So that is why I set this. I want you to summarise the main argument and conclusions that William reaches in 500 words. And I think, well, Leighton, why do you want me to do that? <coughs> well, the reason why I want you to do that is because this is a key skill that you have to do in your degree. Read, summarise, present to the person that is marking it. This is the fundamental core of most of the assessments you will do in a written form. So it's good to get practice in it early in a chapter that I know will be useful for you because you will understand some of the historical dimensions of how the subject came to be. So I'm killing the history thing by getting you to do this, but also you are developing a skill for doing it as well. I haven't decided yet because there is a massive risk. Let me, let me just explain. I, I'm not, it's a bit early to accuse anyone of plagiarism when you haven't produced any written work, all right? There are a lot of good examples of this that students have done in the past. What I might do is pick a couple and put them up, along with a couple of problems, <coughs> so you'd see what's wrong. The only problem with doing that is, it does... I've got to be careful, because in an assignment like this, it's not even temptation. I'm not accusing people of anyone like, you. as soon as you see it, you will copy it. But in a short assignment like this that is on the same material, it's kind of inevitable that those ideas will bleed into your head and that is what you will produce. So I need a bit of time to think about how I can get do one. I might even do one myself that means you don't have the temptation or it doesn't bleed into what you're doing so you get pinged up by, a, um, by turning in for plagiarism. It might be easier if I actually do it myself, which means I've just... Just give myself a word to do. Um, I'm happy to share rubbish ones though, so you can see what you to do. Um, summarising no more than 500 words, um, the main informational argument of another writer is what we always do in a summary. The main argument is on page 28. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's the great thing about this. People will read it and they're like, there's no more argument. I said, I didn't read it all, did you? Um, so page 28. That is your assignment two. Third of November. Assignment three, the eighth of December, 2 p.m. For assignment three, you will be asked to produce a 250 word glossary entry. So you will be given a term relevant to media studies, and you will have to write a 250 word definition. You will have to use academic material, which you will have to cite using the APA format, which you will have learned in assignment one. I've given you a dictionary of terms already, which you might have seen on Canvas earlier. It is free. It is not actually free. Somebody paid for it, but it won't be. Um, so that can help you in this. Most people end up citing that, and most people go away with another source as well to cite. You might think, well, then, you've got us to do a summary. Now, why are you getting us to do this? <coughs> Being precise and detailed and accurate in your definitions of terms is an essential skill in your degree. This assessment is based around those parameters. Are you precise? Are you accurate? Are you detailed within this 200? You produce a precise, detailed, accurate definition of a term, and we're all happy. There are two marks for this assignment. There is your individual mark, and there is your mark as an entire group. Because over Christmas, somebody, not me, is going to take all your definitions and distribute them to everybody in media degrees. You will have produced a glossary of terms for everyone. So, your names will go on that. So if yours is shit, everyone will know. It's 
Special humiliation. Of course, the group master. What can I do with that? Apart from brand you for the rest of your careers. Any questions about that one? No? Pretty straightforward? Good. The challenge is going to be how the hell am I going to come up with 100 terms? Some of you are going to be doing some really weird definitions because I kind of topped out at about 80 and now I've got to find another 20. It's going to be hard. Simon so Four. Deadline actually has changed. I've got to tell you that first of all. I've changed it on canvas. I forgot to do it in the slides, unfortunately. I was reviewing these literally an hour ago. And then of course when I came in here, I was like, yeah. Okay, so the deadline is the 12th of January, so you've got an extra week from this one. Um, it is an essay. The essay titles are in the handbook. You can take a look at them now. You will be asked to do three things, well, four things really. 500 word essay plan, 250 word feedback reflection. That is usually based on assignment two. So whatever feedback you were given in assignment two, you were asked to, you know, how did you integrate that into what you were doing for this essay. It's basically a way of making sure that you read your feedback and act on it. Um, 2,000 word essay full, the word count kind of begins at the first word of your essay and ends at the last full stop of your essay. References do not count, the cover page does not count, the essay plan doesn't count and the feedback reflection doesn't count. And then a bibliography, which it, you've got to do with every essay, but I guess it's kind of something that's marked, but um, you know, if you'll be doing that with every essay anyway. So I guess there's four different parts to this. And this is the way of consolidating your learning on a particular topic in a detailed way. You've all done essays before? Week three, I'll show you how to do this and get a first break. These people. <coughs> Those are the assignments for this module. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah? Sweet. I like in this group, no questions, no comments. You're all really quiet. Carry on. This is brilliant, making my life so easy. These are taken from the handbook, these are the key texts for this module. The first one is the most important, the top one. I've given you a free copy of that, which you have seen. Please access it, please use it. Please say thank you, Leighton, for being so kind and generous and for making our lives easier. And I'm like, yeah, because that's what I'm here to do. Because, you know, th that's me. I'm, I'm all part. Reading is really important, so I'm sure of well, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, I know Joanna has said this already. Because I know Joanna. But reading is really, really important. Self-directed study is an important aspect of your course. Better assigns benefit from reading around the subject. Start by reading William's chapter today. That would be a good place to start. Reading, I mean, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Do you need to hear this again? No, you don't. But, in order to get a good mark in this module, you will need to engage with some reading around. Okay? Those who regurgitate my lectures back at me in essays get a maximum mark of 35%. Maximum. I get it every year. I get at least 10 people who just basically copy and paste my lecture notes back at me as an essay. I've read my lecture notes. I did them. I'm not calling it plagiarism, I'm just calling you lazy. Alright? You will get a maximum of 35. If you show me that you have done some reading and you can use it, oh, what's that 35 turn into a 70, bitch? This is huge! Okay? You do have to get in the habit of not relying on what we tell you, relying on what you do with what we tell you. That's the important. Attendance is important. Here's what's going to happen. In the last week, actually the penultimate week of the semester, <coughs> I am going to take the marks for assessment one and assessment two and aggregate them for everyone. Then I'm going to plot that against your attendance in lectures and in seminars. I will see a beautiful, 
perfect correlation because I do this every year. The correlation, you know, that, you know, your maths, you did scattergrams, you that line of best fit. Oh, yeah. And it's ideal, it's perfect. And I don't want to cast excursions on people here because I don't know you people yet. But, like, you know, there's. Imagine there's like three. That's me. I set an alarm telling you the shit. Imagine there's three people sitting in this empty row here. Okay? So I can't point at people because that's bad. Because that's victimization. We don't want to victimize people yet. <laughs> Person one here has been to every lecture. Person one is a bit of a key, you know, a bit over the top, and you know, I'm, I'm not into person one really because they just read the best and I'm not that. Person one has been to everything, done all the reading and so on. Person one is up there. Person two, not bad, done the readings, not really paid attention to them. Been to the lectures, but kind of half asleep. Missed a couple of seminars because you know, it's a.m. on a Friday. I'm in the middle. And person three <coughs> is me when I was an undergraduate student. Don't do a.m. at all. That would interrupt with my drinking the night before. I don't put. I don't do effort. I don't do reading. Person three is very. Person three is a loser. Person three is going to end up spitting into burgers at McDonald's for the rest of their professional career. Does anyone know the percentage of burgers that get spat in in McDonald's? When I was working there as a kid, it was about 80%. I believe they've taken it down to about 50 now, but you want to be careful. The odds are blessed off buying two burgers, throwing one away. Then it's 50 50 shot, right? <laughs> that's the McDonald's. You know, that's, that's the double jeopardy. Yeah. Attendance is important. There is no better correlation between achievement and, attend and attendance. That is the perfect uh, correlation. Referencing news version 7, that is the guide up on the thing. Um, when we come back in five minutes, because we're going to have a nice little break now, and we're going to go, oh. Oh my god, this lecture is amazing. I'm going to go on my Instagram. It's like so fucking good it is. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about what media is. Please feel free to get up, leave. No, we'll come back, obviously. You know, but if you want to leave, there's any. Those of you who smoke, have one for me. I can't do it anymore. I give up. <coughs>
so bad for so yeah, recording lectures. I think that's only like seven or eight death bombs so far. I haven't used the C word once, so that'll cut. <laughs>